What up, Josh Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today I want to talk about cholesterol and fat. Since we're doing a radio show tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time with Ray Pete on our Blog Talk radio show, and he's going to cover a lot of these topics, but I want to get this out there to help some people that can't listen to the show live or download it later, just to give you some endpoints on cholesterol, why cholesterol is so important, why it's used in the body, what it means if it's high, and maybe some of the things we can do to lower it. Of course, my thing is, you watch my YouTubes, I am not into giving solutions because everyone is different. We have to look at why someone has high cholesterol. Now, i got a list here, a long list outline of a lot of topics I want to cover. I might read a couple and then elaborate on them, so just bear with me, tune in. If you don't want to listen, fast forward, shut it off right now, but I'm here to share what I learned, and that's the bottom line. So 80% of the cholesterol is actually in the body, is produced in the body. 20% of it actually comes from our food. Cholesterol is actually the largest antioxidant in the body. And it's actually produced to protect the body when we have heavy metal toxicity. It's produced when we need more of an antioxidant from increased free radical production, from lack of light, unsaturated fats in the diet, uh, alcohol. As we age, we produce more um, free radicals, maybe from excess iron, uh, from using the wrong type of salt, cooking ware. Um, eating the wrong types of foods, eating too much liver, and so forth. But the bottom line is when the body is stressed, it's going to produce increased cholesterol. That's the body's normal reaction. Why are we trying to lower cholesterol? We're actually trying to tell the body what to do. Why not just take a step back, and why not listen to the body? Because the body's telling us something. My cholesterol is high. What could that possibly mean? That actually means that you're in a state of inflammation. We have to listen to the body and say, well, where's this coming from? What do I need to do? Maybe the body needs vitamin A, E, saturated fats, thyroid hormone, copper, uh, magnesium. It actually needs these, especially vitamin A and E, to, uh, to make the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone, which is a precursor to all your steroidal hormones in your body, especially progesterone, DHEA, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone. All these hormones actually help with mood, maturation. Uh, um, they help with uh, regulating blood sugar blood pressure. Um, it, it's just amazing. And the thing is, there's a lot of research to show that the more you lower the cholesterol, the lack, the less libido you're going to have and the more depressed you're going you're gonna to be because you're lowering your steroidal hormones. You're putting your body at risk for actually uh, not reproducing, which we see all over the world. I remember reading a book and Dr. Lee talked about when he started his practice, Dr. John Lee, who coined the term estrogen dominance, he talked about people coming in, it was all about hormone balancing. And then, I think it was around the 70s, he said, I'm not sure, maybe 80s. It, people started coming in, it wasn't, or women, it wasn't about balancing hormones anymore. It was about actually helping women get pregnant because they were so infertile. And we have to really think about this. You have to think about why your cholesterol is high. And think about listening to the body instead of trying to lower it. What can you change in your life to actually maybe lower it and not take something to lower it. Because there's so many side effects from taking statins. i got a list here, and I don't know why anyone would want to take a statin, from headaches to diarrhea, difficulty breathing, swelling of the throat and face, rashes, joint pain, insomnia, inflammation of the pancreas, liver problems, rashes, nausea, dizziness, depression, tingling sensation, gallstones, inflammation of the gallbladder, poor memory, and more. Who the hell would want to take a statin if you were running the risk of getting any of those symptoms? It doesn't make any sense. So think about it if your cholesterol is raised. Think about what you need to do. Consult with a practitioner. If a doctor's trying to shove a medication down your throat, it's not their fault. You have to do the education to say, hmm, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I have to figure out why I have high cholesterol. Maybe it's the food. Maybe it's my environment. Maybe it's heavy metals. Maybe it's a thyroid insufficiency, a vitamin A insufficiency, and so forth. Back on track. Enough of my rant there. Um, according to Dr. Ray Pete, increased cholesterol can actually come from poor food choices like unsaturated fats, undigestible foods, inflammatory proteins or too much of them like muscle meats, lack of light because light stimulates progesterone, and darkness actually, and it stimulates mitochondrial respiration, meaning it, it, your cells can actually use oxygen and cholesterol efficiently to produce carbon dioxide to get your thyroid and your metabolism working properly. Where darkness can actually stimulate um, serotonin and estrogen, which in by themselves can stimulate cortisol and adrenaline. So those things can actually increase cholesterol levels in the body. Circulating cholesterol is actually converted into vitamin D, which is huge in the medical industry right now, which is anti-inflammatory, and it actually helps the body absorb calcium, which is so important. So without vitamin D, you can't absorb calcium. So if, you, if you're taking calcium and you're vitamin D deficient, you're wasting your time. You're just making calcium poop. 
And we have to look at vitamin D. Where can we get it in our food? It's a fat-soluble vitamin. But also, how do we get it? Most When I was a kid, everyone played outside after school. No one's playing outside anymore. No one's getting outside anymore to get the vitamin D during those most important hours. We store the inactive form of vitamin D in our liver. It's called cholecalciferol. We make that conversion when we need it in the body to the active form of vitamin D. Now, the problem is we have to look at, do I actually need more vitamin D, which is usually the issue, but is my liver working properly to actually make the conversion? Is there stress on my hepatic cells from too many unsaturated fats? Is my liver being overburdened from a lot of toxins in my stomach or small intestine? Is my liver being overburdened because it can't detoxify estrogen because I'm not eating the right foods, I'm not regulating my blood sugar, I'm taking the birth control pill, um, or I'm not eating the right anti-inflammatory proteins like broth, dairy, and eggs, or, or shellfish and things like that to actually assist my liver in detoxifying estrogen. And Ray P. talks about this. Dr. Weatherby actually talks about this. You can use raw carrots once a day and bamboo shoots to actually assist the body in detoxifying estrogen because they have a fiber in them we actually can't break down. So the fiber prevents the reabsorption of estrogen in the small intestine, absorbs the toxins and the estrogen, and we poop them out. That's why a lot of the times you'll see, if you eat a raw carrot sliced, you'll see it in your stool because we can't really break it down. As I mentioned, cholesterol is a precursor to all your steroidal hormones. You lower your cholesterol, you increase your chances of immune system dysfunction, hormonal dysregulation, and metabolic insufficiencies, hands down. It's that simple. Cholesterol actually is very important in producing aldosterone. Aldosterone is huge in regulating blood volume in the body. This is important in women, especially when they're pregnant, because they have to increase their blood volume by 40% to actually support the fetus. So if you lower your cholesterol, you actually disrupt aldosterone production, which can lower blood volume and actually affect how your cells and your organs um, get oxygen and nutrients. So it pulls nutrients and oxygen away from the cells, causes the ischemia and asphyxia, and in women, this causes miscarriages. Pretty simple. Um, cholesterol is very important to actually stabilize the mitochondria in your body of your cell. And this is, a cell, this is part of the cell that produces energy and hormones. So it actually helps to get your cells to use oxygen efficiently, produce carbon dioxide, which is very stimulatory to the thyroid and to the body in producing more progesterone and down-regulating a lot of the inflammatory hormones in the body like prolactin, which leaches calcium from the bone, the loss of magnesium from being hypothyroid, um, as well as estrogen and serotonin, which are highly inflammatory and actually can cause uh, stimulation of cortisol independently of the hypothalamus and the pituitary. The reason they're seeing most people with low cholesterol are getting de or there's a high incidence of depression is because the brain actually has a high amount of receptor sites for cholesterol. Um, let's look at more of my list here so I can elaborate a little more. <clears throat> um, let's see. Sorry about that. Having low cholesterol, cholesterol, once again, is dangerous. It can increase your risk of oxidative stress, free radical production. It can lower your hormones. It's, it's just, I can't harp on this enough. The more you lower your cholesterol, the more you put yourself at, at risk for all those things I talked about. And Ray P. also talks about, and he quotes a lot of studies, how low cholesterol levels actually have been linked to aggressive and violent behavior, depression, and suicidal tendencies. Watch the TV. What's going on right now? We never see happy news. Everyone's shooting people up, killing people. We're seeing depression, medication commercials on the internet. It's out of control. And I'm not saying that lowering cholesterol is the problem, but it's definitely one of the factors because every year the medical community comes out and says we want to lower cholesterol even more. We need to get it below 200. We need to get it below 180 and so forth. And it's going to keep getting lower and lower. And the problem is we're tuning, we're turning people into these basically estrogen dominant um, um corpses that have no libido, no emotion, and all they can think about is uh, just reacting to life instead of responding. Taking pregnenolone can actually help with the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone. Foods like dairy, eggs, and liver can actually help with that intake because of the vitamin A and B5 content in them, which is required to convert cholesterol to pregnenolone. Vitamin C in the right form has actually been known to help reduce cholesterol as well as niacin, and I mentioned vitamin E. And if you study the work of Broda Barnes and Dr. Ray Pete, they talk about how high cholesterol, and they've been talking about this for a long time, is actually a marker for hypothyroidism. Because your body needs T3 to make the conversion. 
So let's say cholesterol goes up because you're stressed and you need this antioxidant. You don't need to take antioxidants. And you don't have T3 to make the conversion into pregnenolone. Well, your cholesterol is going to stay here or keep going up. So a lot of people that are actually have high cholesterol, it's actually a marker for hypothyroidism. Now, I'm not saying everyone go out and start taking T3. If you eat the right foods, the right ratios, if you're eating right frequencies, you regulate your blood sugar, that's going to downregulate inflammation, increase progesterone, pregnenolone, and thyroid hormone in the body, and carbon dioxide, because your cells are going to be breathing properly which is actually going to help with the conversion of cholesterol. We do it all the time with people. We just had a client email us and tell us, just off of her diet alone, after three months, her cholesterol has gone down by 50 points. And to boot, she's actually increased her saturated fat in intake with eggs, dairy, coconut oil, and butter. Who would think? Thunk. Dr. AP talks about how people in the right state, more of a homeostatic state, that taking DHEA can actually lower LDL cholesterol. Now, I'm not saying take... DHEA, because if you take it, which a lot of people do, and you're in an inflammatory state, you're going to convert DHEA to estrogen, which can actually exacerbate blood sugar fluctuations, decrease blood volume, increase inflammation, inhibit the thyroid, and overburden the liver, lower body temperatures, which will increase your cholesterol. So it's only important to take when you're in a homeostatic state, but if we think about it, if we eat the right foods, the right ratios of foods, right frequencies, and we down-regulate inflammation in the body, and we up-regulate all these anti-inflammatory markers, DHEA is one of them that will eventually go up. Now, it does decrease as we age, but the thing we have to think about is, why does it decrease? Does it naturally decrease, or is it de does it decrease because of the lifestyle that we live and the foods that we eat? Which I think it's a little bit of both, but I think it's more about what we put upon ourselves or what we put in our body. Adrenaline production in the body will actually increase cholesterol levels. Now, anytime you have a blood sugar fluctuation, anytime the body is stressed, you release adrenaline to release blood sugar stores in the body, which stimulates cortisol to elevate blood sugar and glucagon. Now, the problem with this is adrenaline is going to increase cortisol. So if you're always stressed, emotionally stressed, physically stressed, you're eating the wrong foods, you get an adrenaline reaction, which typically is a, a rapid heart rate, uh, high pulse, uh, increase um, sweating, things like that. Uh, you eat foods and your blood sugar drops, you have crashes, you're going to have high cholesterol levels. So the key is maybe not to lower the cholesterol levels, but to look at your nutrition in your life and figure out how can I actually downregulate adrenaline. Well, people that are sodium deficient actually have high adrenaline levels. So sodium in itself, using the right types of salts in your diet, not table salt. Some people are going to use Celtic salt and, and, and Himalayan sea salt. Now, according to some people, those are high in toxins and iron. So a better salt would be a Morton's pickling salt because it's low in iron, and iron is actually toxic to the body and can stimulate um, the stress reaction. It can downregulate mitochondrial respiration. So your cells are going to actually produce too much lactic acid instead of carbon dioxide, which is inflammatory. So you can use salt in the diet to downregulate adrenaline to actually help regulate um, cholesterol levels. I'm not saying that's the only thing you need to do. It's actually just a piece of the puzzle to help the body lower cholesterol. Now, what are some of the things that you can do? Well, it's it's obviously person-specific. The first thing you need to do is look at the foods you're eating. Increase your saturated fat content with coconut oil, butter, uh, dairy, the right type, and eggs. Eat foods that are high in vitamin A, E, D, and K. Um, you can use things like niacin or you can get from dairy or um, um, vitamin C from the right source to help with cholesterol. But if you're eating the right foods like dairy, liver, eggs, broth, fish, uh, saturated fats that are in tropical fruits, they need to produce these to actually help um, prevent the rancidity of the fats because they actually are, are kind of growing in a high heat. And using these saturated fats like butter, coconut oil, and um, the eggs... You can actually, in the right ratios, the right frequencies, regulate blood sugar, increase thyroid production to help with the conversion to lower cholesterol. So you not only need to look at the supplements you can take, but you need to look at the foods that you're eating, and that's why we work with people all over the world to help you with this. Of course, you need to get out more. You can use light therapy. I did a YouTube on that. You can check it out. But of course, reducing the overall stresses in your life, emotional stressors, uh, physical stressors, because if you're eating the right foods, but you have all these stressors, anytime the body's stressed, you need, you, the body releases adrenaline and cortisol. And if you're not eating the right foods, you're not going to downregulate that. So, enough of me rambling. Tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time. I'm out of here.